Let's talk about how the progressives are going to fuck up their kids as much as the conservatives. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I want to kind of, going off of last week's, explore how even progressives are probably going to mess up their children and how that's just life. Now, I'm going to use a very specific YouTuber as an example, FD signifier, and I'm going to use my friend Kidology Z to kind of explain this phenomenon as well. I'll use other examples, of course, but I just want to do a little disclaimer once again. The FD signifier and Kidology are real people with real feelings, and I just want to be very considerate of them as we have this conversation because, again, I am a person who used to be politically progressive. I used to roll around with BreadTube. I know all those people, right? I've met all those people. And so I don't want FD or anyone else to think I'm coming from a political uh, lens or bubble. I am making a video to explore my thoughts in relation to how our bubbles are interacting with one another. Okay, before we jump in, I'm drinking a coffee today with homemade whipped cream. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. It's so good. Mark has been bringing me home heavy whipping cream um, as uh, like for my drink <laughs> because I can't have carbs and heavy whipping cream is kind of a loophole. So there you go. No more milk for Brittany, just heavy whipping cream. Okay, in today's video. So FD Signifier said something very, very specific to Kidology in a recent collab they did together on her channel, not his, that kind of blew my mind. And it made me realize like, oh my gosh, this is the problem. And this is a part of the problem. So it's not, I'm not making a, a world ending solution here. I'm not, you know, but I am going to say that this is a big part of the problem. Now, prior to this, um, prior to Kidology and I doing our collab together, I hadn't really watched FD Signifier except for like three or four videos. And I found him to be very bubbly, which is fine. You guys know, I think a bubble exists, um, in every person and then within every person, every culture, and then every culture represents a bubble. I think bubbles are everywhere. Bubbles are belief systems, ideas, concepts of reality we sh we have with existence. So we're existing and then there's existence. So FD exists in a bubble in which his existence is multifaceted. He's a father. He is a stroke victim. He is a black man. He is uh, a male. He has like all these things that distinguish him from somebody else. And then inside... Oh, Alongside of those, he also belongs to the progressive bubble, which holds him to a standard that's very specific, much like Dr. Jordan Peterson, much like anyone else. The moment you have a fan group, a bubble, an audience, a community that expects something of you and that if you do something different, it's held against you. That is the bubble that is so hard to belong to. It's a society bubble. It's that community bubble. And FD has decided to be part of a bubble that is trans exclusive. Uh, hey, future uh, editing Brittany here. Inclusive. I meant trans inclusive. And I said exclusive. That makes no sense. He's the progressive in this conversation. He is trans inclusive. My bad. Which is wonderful. As an LGBT person myself, obviously, I want a trans inclusive bubble, uh, at least in my own personal bubble, where like I'm trans inclusive in my head. Obviously, Obviously, obviously. And yet, this, the thing he says to Kidology that blew my mind is the thing that is problematic, let's say, with his bubble. Okay. So in a collab they did, which he didn't want to go on his channel to discuss with her because he didn't want his audience to feel uncomfortable with Kidology Z. Yes. Well, I think just in relation to that, I think I'd like to just ask, um, why didn't you talk to me about it? Why didn't you uh, talk to me beforehand because um, you reached out to me a year ago uh, to talk to you and then I didn't hear from you at all and then the next time I heard from you you made a video with your peers uh, about something and it was also quite unique in that uh, you haven't before uploaded a whole stream that you've done on your Patreon onto your B-side channel uh, why this video? Why was this the moment? Why didn't you? Uh, why didn't you talk to me? Um, because I, I was very confused by that. I was very confused by the, I think the sort of uh, indirectness of this entire situation. I, I just, I'm getting the feeling, even from our email interactions, that you don't want to talk to me. Uh, that this is more of an inconvenience or just something that has to be done because of sort of the consequence of you making that reaction video then you actually wanting to talk to me as you would to Bellamy or Professor Flowers or Kadisha or whomever so I just uh, well 
just wondering about that. All right, so starting off, this is one of the first examples I wanna use of miscommunication, one because of, I'm sure, bubbles or whatever you wanna say, but obviously they both went in with different expectations of behavior. Kidology came in with this hope that because they had some sort of context in the past that he would have reached out prior to making content. Um, he is obviously thinking, well, I'm a content creator, you make content, I'm reacting, why would I need to check in with you? Either way, great first example of how miscommunication occurs, but also how both of them were being so honest in this moment about why they did what they did. So listen to what FD says moving forward. It's really interesting. So there's, there's various, you know, I feel like that was multiple questions in a way because there's various explanations as to why we haven't talked. Um, so the first one is about the video in, in particular. Um, that was just a, a spur of the moment type of thing. We we watched your, uh, several people I'm in mean, community that watched your video, and you know we tried to be very clear about this in the video, but it's it's kind of impossible. But our our discussion wasn't meant to be explicitly about kidology, but about this specific perspective that I think all of us are thinking more about. Um, in 2023, I said, you know what, I'm going to get around more and get out of explicitly just making my own content, but think about how I can, you know, provide perspectives that I think are missing from the discourse in a way that um, I am maybe uniquely equipped to do as a, you know, as the, the especially now that T1J has exited the, left, the political sphere. Um, as the only brother still, you know, doing leftist content on YouTube at my level. Um, and so as we discussed it, we realized that we wanted to share this with more people because there were so many things that were in your video that merited discussion and um, unpacking um, and, you know, were, you, would be useful to the community as a whole. Um, so that's why, you know, you didn't get a, uh, uh, an email or a uh, any type of alert to have a discussion because what I don't like doing and I haven't done much. I did a couple um, this year and I was like, yeah, I don't like this. Um, is jumping on with people and like having this debate style content because there's discourse. There's a discussion that we can have privately where we can. Um, meet out our ideas, um, have no fear of consequences of how our ideas might be misinterpreted by a large crowd or clipped out of context or um, used to validate a perspective that we don't want to be attached to. All these different things that happen when you make content, something that I've been trying to bring out more in a lot of my other discussions. And then there's two individuals having a conversation about their ideas and in a private setting where it's not content, it can't be affected by those, you know, commodified capitalistic forces. Um, so I was never having against having a conversation with you uh, about your video, but I knew like when the video was over that the idea of having a conversation with you was going to probably end up being like this because it's only fair. Um, and, and thus, you know, here I am. Now, in terms of like talking to all these other people versus you, those are people I'm in community with. You know, those are people I talk to regularly. There, there is enough beating of the minds, enough connectivity in our political ideologies that it is a, uh, a different type of conversation around conflict and disagreement. Because once it hits this screen, once this camera is, is on me, it becomes entertainment regardless of what we think we're doing or saying or how we feel about what we're saying or the perspective that people might have on us or the perspective we have of ourselves it is entertainment and so with you um being a person i'm not in community with it was just kind of like like that's just a reality situation so in this section i really want to observe how fd so eloquently and perfectly sums up a bubble and doesn't even realize it it's kind of amazing to me, but he talks about how he's in community with certain people, but not in community with Kidology. That's like a bubble, right? Oh, we don't share the same bubbles. We don't come from the same reality. We don't share what we think is important, right? He's distinguishing that they have different 
relationships with the issues of existence, right? He talks about the different bubbles, like even though he is working on YouTube and creating, he's also considering that he's entertainment to some people. Considering that your entertainment kind of does sway how a political content creator could be creating content. So out of respect for his political bubble, we have to be more self-aware. Like Kidology identifies as apolitical. I am relatively apolitical, but not really. Like I have my personal values. I have strong ideas and and opinions, but I'm not in the political bubble anymore. I'm not act I'm not an activist anymore. I'm not involved Involved anymore. I mean, I do vote, but again, I'm voting as Brittany the citizen, not as Brittany the activist. So I'm really trying to vote for my local communities much more so than anything else. And that tends to be different, right? So again, we're describing bubbles and then the motivation. So remember that FD is motivated differently than Kidology. And this is so important because once again, he himself is trying to make this clear we are not alike. And I know for a lot of people, there might be this assumption because they're both black, as an example, that they should have some sort of harmony, but they're very distinctly different kinds of black, right? The bubbles are different. He's American black. She's um, South African black. It's very different. And so again, we are faced with the bubble reality in this moment. We are faced with their differences, even when we're looking at them and thinking, oh, they must be similar, right? Wrong. And that's the point. We are not just perfectly informed by what we're seeing. We have to delve deeper into the nuance of these relationships, which is why these two bubbles can't get along. One thing I got from watching, because I watched um, chunks of both of your responses, is that there's a maybe a sense of, I don't, I don't know what, I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there is a, a sense of maybe uh, hurt in that, you know, there was maybe a possibility for us to be in community together and then that didn't happen. Um, and, you know, I don't want to, I always want to be clear that that's mostly because I am really only interested in being, especially when it comes to YouTube and content, in being in community with other leftists, Black and otherwise. And, you know, that was not a personal thing. It was just a consideration in terms of what I think is best for my presence online. Um, and, you know, not wanting to uh, compromise, you know, your your stance position. All right. So in this section, we're seeing FD really just make it clear. I'm in my bubble. You're in your bubble. And I'm not interested in mixing our bubbles. Now, obviously, within his value system, he wanted to come on and explain that to Kidology during her live show on her channel, which I thought was commendable. But it, also, this is a kind of perfect response from a political content creator who's trying to push an agenda forward. So I can't even fault FD for this stance. Once again, when you're a political streamer, a political streamer traditionally wants to move you in a direction versus somebody like maybe me or Kidology, maybe we're less interested in that. Well, obviously, if you're a political streamer or political content creator, the whole idea is that you have a specific direction you want to move people in. And so FD makes that really, really clear. And so in that regard, I really honestly have to respect the position. As you guys know, content creators are real people. And so it does hurt our feelings when people make videos about us that clearly take us out of context. And FD said something very interesting. He said to her, basically, that even if you don't know what a dog whistle is, you still did it. And that's a problem. Uh, I would not knowingly pull someone on on the team, pull someone in the clip, pull someone on the platform and say, hey, this person's idea is da, 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 da. I would have to say, so, you know, Kidology, great stuff here, which I have done. Um, I don't know if you if you see me mention you um, in my content, but then I would have to add the caveat. Also, Kidology doesn't have a lot of negative to say about Jordan Peterson's transphobia. Um, I think, I don't know if you consider that a fair, you know, description of your perspective, Jordan Peterson. I'm not saying that you love him. I'm not saying that you are a strong believer, but in every time I've heard you mention him, you haven't mentioned that. And that is, from my perspective, problematic, you know? Um, and so when we're talking about, you know, I'm here on your platform because you get to set the standards for, you know, what comes on your platform and you have a different perspective on what you, you want your platform to be. I am not, I'm not that interested in, in public discourse and debate. Um, I'm trying to develop it. I'm trying to find ways to manifest it and utilize it going forward. But I, I want to be a video essayist. I want to make movies about, I want to make videos about black movies. And when I, this, when I 
like fortunate upon this type of platform, then I said, well, I want my platform to be a place where everybody, or not everybody, <laughs> where people who are used to not being seen and heard in a certain way can feel seen and heard in a specific way. And to just be blunt, I, I don't think your, like some of the ideas that you harbor or that you haven't engaged in um, fit that. So I kept this part in because I needed you to see the context for his thinking. This is perfect, perfect bubble thinking. He knows exactly why he believes what he believes and why he's making content and who it's for. This is great. This is contrary to my sphere on the internet, like Kidology and Destiny and ABBA. Like we're all here to be sort of challenged and or challenged. But I think FD in that particular side of YouTube is more concerned with making a safe space, which I think is also important. So depending on your goals, obviously... FD and Kidology and me and Destiny, like it wouldn't make sense for any of us to talk, I suppose, unless FD was open to like a different perspective. But I think his concern is mostly protecting trans people, which is a good thing. I just think the way he's going about it doesn't quite work with debate discourse, which makes sense, which he said himself. And so that's really the main reason, you know, I'm not saying you're a transphobe, um, but I mean, you have I don't a, a, a transphobe, so um, I, I don't well, know. I, I take that back until I take that back until further notice, um, and I apologize for, for how that may have uh, upset you. But I will say that your channel is trans antagonistic. Your channel, much like you know, uh, we we talked about Abraham Abbey and Preach. Your channel is not as bad as Abbey and Preach, right? Is a sickness. It is deviant, and we do not want it. But. I imagine that some trans people when they, I, I know, because I, I talked and I heard from them, that some trans people saw that the left do better video and were like, ooh, there's there's some stuff in there that, that concerns me. And you cleared a lot of it up, right? But I'm sure you can imagine why on initial, uh, an initial reaction from a person who's more sensitive to that issue would say, oh, no, that, that was there was some stuff. There. So FD is making a really great point throughout this whole conversation. But in particular, this is kind of where he is saying in a way, right, that Kidology is dog whistling, whether or not she knows she is or not. He's basically saying that people did have issues with what she was saying because it was dog whistling, whether she knew it or not. It's, it's really actually kind of confusing, but it actually kind of makes sense within his bubbles mechanism. It's the same way that I feel when I'm like just checking in with my friends and I'm like, hey, just to like ask a question, is this what you mean? Or sometimes I'll even get emotional about it. But this, the, I totally understand what FD is saying. To the person who's listening, it sounds like a dog whistle. Now, whether or not it literally is, is up for discussion. And I think with Kidology, it's less like a dog whistle and more like her perspective with the information she has and what her knowledge is. And I think that's really important here. Not really. I, I did find that quite difficult to navigate because in terms of... I hadn't actually really ever heard of dog whistling as sort of a, a term before your video. And so that was very interesting to hear uh, about all the uh, alleged transphobic dog whistles and anti-black dog whistles and all of that. You even said that, you know, a lot of what we do is actually apolitical, that we don't actually do politics. So. Is there a reconciliation there? Because I sort of feel that it's fine for you to say these things, but for me to say th these things, it's dog whistling. Me not platforming you was not due to you being apolitical. I, I explicitly said, because I, I found some of your content trans antagonistic and I want my space to be trans positive. Um, this is not calling you a transphobe, but this is saying that I don't want to put viewers of mine that are trans or trans positive in a position where they have to grapple with and engage with, uh, you know, antagonistic ideas or individuals or ideologies to their existence. I want to be clear of that. It's not about you. The platforming is not about you being apolitical. In terms of like the existence, this being apolitical, I don't think we disagree, but I think we're talking about two different things. Um, at times. So doing politics, I have one video where I'm doing politics, and that is my um, Stop the, you know, uh, Atlanta Cop City video. That is 
doing politics with content, which I don't do because that doesn't that doesn't pay my bills of feeding children. If I were to use your content as an artifact of, anal of analysis and have to extrapolate meaning from that content and put it on a gradient scale from left to right, it would obviously be center right, you know, but making videos and sharing political ideas is a, is not a political act in the sense that you're actually participating in political action, but it presents a political ideology to the world, to 130 some thousand people. Um, and so to me, that's two different things. You know, I think calling, you know, I think doing videos around political, political topics and then calling yourself apolitical is, is mostly just shielding from, you know, reasonable critique around what political ideas were uh, shared in your in your content. And so if we wanted to, we could just say, okay, because I just hate political, but this video was right wing. So we're going to assess the right wing or centrist ideas within this video. We have the we have the right and necessity to be focused on self-preservation first and foremost, um, especially in the face of overwhelming hostility. Um, and so for you know, for Bellamy to say, if a transfer is a college you're transfer, then you're transfer. That doesn't mean you have to change your perspective on whether or not you're transfer. That is, <laughs> that is our internal <laughs> memo to to keep in mind. Um, that is our internal thing to consider, understand, define, meet out to each other. Um, and you know, it, it's. The reason why stuff like that is said is because for trans people, the debate, like there is a debate on their existence that is ongoing. And Kidology, Z, being a person who's bubble hopped her whole life, who has a very interesting story, I'm just getting to know her and I'm just like blown away with her story already, is a person who doesn't know what a dog whistle is. Not everyone does. It's such a political concept, right? Even me, now that I'm outside of politics, I forget all the rules around politics. That bubble is so specific. And so for any of us to have the arrogance to assume that everyone's keeping up, a, up to date is just outrageous. But the thing that really blew my mind was the fact that even though she doesn't know what it is, he still accused her of doing that. Now, okay, I'm an introspective person. I started to consider that. Okay, what are things that someone could do and still not know is, well, the thing they just did? So maybe you um, you smoke what you think is tobacco and ends up being weed. And it's like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Well, you did it anyways. Maybe you're a person who rapes someone and you think it's consensual, but it's not consensual on their end. And you just raped someone and didn't even know it. Okay. I'm trying to think of all these scenarios in which I've done something and I don't know I'm doing it. But here's the thing. Dog whistling, it requires the knowledge of knowing. So yes, she could technically, uh, no, not, no, uh, scratch that. She couldn't even technically dog whistle. Um, Unless she knew what it was a dog whistle. So, okay. So to explain it in the way that I understand it, and maybe in my bubble it's different, but a dog whistle is basically saying something that sounds one way to one group, but to the group you're really trying to communicate to says the real thing you mean. So maybe somebody might say, um, well, trans women are trans women. So yes, they're women, but they're trans, which is a fact. Yeah, trans women are women. But maybe the dog whistle there is that trans women aren't cis women and therefore aren't women. But unless you know the intentionality of the person saying it, it could just be a statement of fact because it is factual and objective that trans women aren't cis women. They're trans women. But again, if you're a person who thinks cis women are the only kind of women that really exist, you might be hearing a different message. So a dog whistle can sound like one thing, but could meet another. But if you don't know that you're dog whistling, I just don't think you can dog whistle. Now, you can argue with me in the comments. Please do. And please let me know what you think about this. But that really blew my mind. So here's F uh, FD. He's smart. 
more than capable. I've been binging his content recently because I thought, well, before I made a podcast about him, I probably should. I've watched um, uh, Dissecting the Manosphere. Um, I might have a drama problem, Broke Bread. I watched um, Hashing um, Things Out with FD Signifier, which was on Kidology's channel. I've watched Connecting the Manosphere from FD himself. So I've tried to watch a few videos. I had them listed here. I tried to watch a few. I tried to understand him. And I really, my heart goes out for him. He's a father, multiple children, and he just had a stroke. That would scare me so much. So my my heart really went out to him as like a real person, right? Because we're real people. But ideas wise, I think he really failed himself and his community the moment he accused Z of doing something she didn't even know she was doing. Now, please note here that FD might not actually be accusing um, Kidology of being a dog whistler, which sounds crazy because I just made a whole argument about how he did that. But I need to be open to the idea that he is lukewarm accusing her of being trans antagonistic, as he says, which, in a, again, depending on how you're hearing it, could be the accusation of dog whistling, even though she didn't know what she was doing. But also, he doesn't trust her. So I just want to make that clear that I am aware that in some part of FD's brain, he might not actually be accusing her. He might just be so of, um, hesitant or afraid of her that it sounds like he's trying to warn people away from her. Maybe his own version of dog whistling uh, in, in a way. Now, it's funny as I'm listening to this, I don't like the way FD talks about Kidology. Now, again, Kidology and I just became friends and we've, we're really just establishing our friendship, which I hope lasts for years. But when I look at her and I try to understand who she is, I can see her questioning, which means she's pondering, which means she's open. Now, funny enough, when I was watching it, so I don't like the way FD talks about Kidology. I think it's the wrong way to see her. But I also don't like the way Kidology talks about JK Rowling because I think it's the wrong way to see her. So again, here I am coming from my perspective, giving my preferences, my ideas of the world, my ideas of what humans should be. And I'm telling you, I don't like the way you do something. Because I, I, I think it's not the clearest answer, but again, I could be wrong. So it's our job as content creators, or at least people who are interested in solving problems, to really dissect them. Why do they exist? Why do progressives think they're the ones doing the best? What gave the progressives an idea that they had the answers for 8 billion people? What made the progressives so narcissistic? Well, it, it first started with the idea of being virtuous, being right, being progressive, meaning leading us into the future. I think it started really wholesome and curious. And I remember, God, I remember becoming an SJW. I was sitting in my uh, rented house. Well, I was renting rooms. I was in Seattle and I was watching fucking Anita. I was watching, um, what's Anita's channel's name? Uh, Feminist Frequency? Yeah, Fre Feminist Frequency. I was watching Feminist Frequency and I was hating on her because I was such an anti-feminist at the time. And I was like, she's stupid. I hate her. I hate everything about this. And then what she said kind of started to happen to me in real life. I was involved in the Amazing Atheist part of YouTube. I was a staunch atheist. I was coming out of religion. And I was trying to be myself and be free and be liberated from conservative um, modesty and notions around my body. And the atheist liberals shamed me for it, called me a slut, wrote me awful comments, just made it clear that I, as a woman, if I was in any way going to be inappropriate with how I dressed myself, that they were going to see me as a bimbo and basically worthless, which reinforced what Feminist Frequency was talking about in her stupid video games uh, 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 series, right? That women, two men, were seen as these just objects. So the irony, of course, is that I was coming out of religion, trying to hop into the atheist bubble, and the atheist bubble rejected me, so I hopped into the feminist bubble. I remember joining the feminist bubble and being like, this is the answer to the universe, bros. Then I became a liberal feminist, and then I became a progressive, and I was like, yeah, black lives matter, and trans lives matter, and everybody sucks, and fuck white people. Like I 100% I dove into it, especially being a, like a Middle Eastern person or being a Middle Eastern American person with parents who are immigrants. It's like, oh, these are the bubbles that are going to embrace me. But then after a while, I heard things that FD would say, like the thing FD said to Kidology. I would hear that in these bubbles. I would hear, um, you know, even if you didn't mean to, you still did it. Even, even you just existing hurts my feelings. I kept hearing things that reminded me so much of my conservative bubble. 
And then I started to piece it together. Oh, yeah. The progressives are going to fuck up their kids just like the conservatives did because the conservatives think they're completely right for 8 billion people on the whole planet. And they're sitting on this foundation of moral superiority. The reason the conservatives and the progressives honestly should just get together and call it a day is because y'all believe the same things. You all believe men suck and that they're dangerous and that's why you don't want your daughters near them. (laughs) You both want extreme freedom. You both want help from the government just in different ways. You know what I mean? It's so interesting when I see these bubbles interact. So here's, here's FD, a grown man who's a parent and he's afraid to bring on Kidology onto his channel because she might be threatening to the inclusivity of his trans audience. So fair. As a content creator myself who tries to be LGBT inclusive, I do have a line at ideas. So intentionality matters. Yes, we are inclusive on this channel because I'm pro-freedom and pro-bodily autonomy and all these things. And at the same time, if you have a bad idea, like I think FD does, well, then I don't care what the fuck, like, bullet point goes with your identity. I'm, I don't like it. And I'm going to I have to say it now because he basically gave Kidology no chance at one redemption, no chance of understanding. He objectified her consciousness and didn't even see her as a person. And so he stopped the ability for me to see him as an open person the moment he declared he wasn't one. So the irony of the progressives is that they want to be the open people, but you're not. You're not any more open than my conservative parents, right? If my conservative parents won't allow me to bring home a female as a partner, or won't allow me to bring home my trans friends, right? Because it offends them, right? Why does it offend them? Because they, they think they're morally wrong. They think they're hurting people. It's the same process FD has for not having Kidology on his channel or not wanting to platform her is that he thinks her ideas are harmful. My parents would say the same thing FD says. You're a human. I respect your dignity as a human, but I can't have you on my channel. That's exactly the conservative argument against LGBT people. Because again, none of us actually, right, know what we're doing on this planet, though a lot of us believe we know. We force each other into bubbles all the time, mostly because we create ones that we think are great. Like when my parents curated their bubble, they were thinking this is the greatest environment to raise kids. This is going to be so good for my kids. And it wasn't great for all of us. It was relatively okay, (laughs) But it it had its bad moments, right? Progressives are going to do this to their children. You're going to validate your child's curiosities and you might get it wrong, just like every parent. You as progressives are going to want to honor your children 100%, and that will probably fuck them up in some ways, right? A child who says yes and gets validated every step of the way might not be a better off child. So the idea that we think because we hold these values, which are hardly orchestrated throughout life, like you hardly utilize your values throughout life. FD can't even, can't even utilize his. He can't dignify Kidology enough to humanize her enough to bring her on the channel. To even talk to her in a way that doesn't feel shameful because he's too busy pandering to a certain kind of audience, which is his right. Just like any conservative, he has the right to pander to his audience. Now, I understand this as a content creator. It's really hard to have an audience who's at odds with you. I had an audience that was at at odds with me during my feminist SJW days. I was like super progressive. You know, it was like I was active. I tried to be active. I wasn't as active as other people, obviously. The point is, is that I had enough bubble hopping experience to eventually see the flaws and even the most thoughtful movements. Like these people really tried to be thoughtful. They tried really hard, but they realized that they were human and like everyone else. And they just genuinely didn't want to talk to certain people. No matter how progressive of a person I've met, there's always someone the progressive doesn't like or want to talk to. And it's just not, it's not only Nazis, right? Sometimes it's just people that are different from them slightly. And that is being human. So we need to be very considerate when we talk about being content creators and how we're interacting with people and the intentionality of our values. So like in terms of community building, when you have an audience that that is at odds with you, you have to question yourself in that moment and everything else. Like when it happened to me, I did question myself. I was like, am I the bad guy? My audience is so mad at me. And then I realized I took six months off of YouTube 
I went home and meditated and thought to myself, like, what am I doing with my life? Why is my audience so mad at me? The same way I felt when my audience turned on me that were men because they were mad at me over the feminist stuff. So I was like, oh, it's happening again. My audience is turning on me because I'm changing. And then I realized, OK, I needed to have if I came back to YouTube, I needed to come back with my own intentionality. I needed to be there for me and not my audience. And so that's what I've done. And now I'm more popular and making more money than I've ever made. I've got better friends than I ever had on YouTube. And no one's just going to not be friends with me because we disagree on values. Because to be honest with you, and I've been really contemplating this lately, I don't know anyone in the world who shares my values except my partner. Like who, who shares my values? Not my sister, not my mother, not my friends, not my cousins. Like we say we do. We would all say out loud, we believe in like, not killing children. But we vote for wars and we're pro-abortion and like, you know what I mean? It's a nice idea. And I agree with you in my values, I would prefer not to kill a child. And as far as I know, I've never killed one. Okay. But things happen. We vote a certain way. Life happens. So depending on how you want to, how responsible you want to feel for actions. The idea I'm trying to propose to you guys is that I like Kidology, and I think FD is probably a really great person. And actually, funny enough, he might be a perfect progressive in some ways. Like, there's something about his authenticity that stands out to me that says to me, like, oh, he's really trying to be a good person. And honestly, if I was a progressive still, though I am in spirit, of course, just not politically, because you guys are dramatic as hell. But, um, if, if I was back in the progressive bubble in that way, I think I'd really r- respect him. And I think I do respect him as a father, most likely, and like a man. But as a thinker, I think the way he thinks only works in his bubble, which proves it's not objectively helpful to anyone but him and his fam, his fam, like his fan base, not fam, his fan base. So here's Kidology, this woman who's genuinely being hurt by what hap- what's happened, um, and she can't be hurt by anybody. She's not the right kind of minority or not the right kind of sympathetic victim. She's not she's not right because she's not perfect and therefore it doesn't deserve compassion. And that's interesting to me. Now, Kidology brought up something that I thought was really interesting. And I just want to say it out loud here because FD signifier seemed really just didn't give a fuck. Kidology feels that because of his video towards her video that she's lost like 90 percent of her income. I'll tell you this YouTuber, YouTuber, it's probably not just that. It's probably a lot of things, but it really impacted her. And I feel for her in that regard. I've definitely like woken up and just like had my channel demonetized and all these things. And it's just a mess all the time. Every time this gig is a, we are gig workers. It is, you know, you don't always know if you're going to make money. I don't make money on my videos necessarily. I just hope I'm going to make money. So I make content for free and hopefully I make money, right? That is our, we are gig workers. So FYI, join my Patreon for $10 a month. It's really, really great and help support the channel. So I understand this concern. Even though I don't necessarily agree that one person's video could have destroyed this career that she has, considering how many subscribers she has, it doesn't really matter because she needs to be validated first, which is something I learned from the progressive bubble. And then we need to talk about whether or not it's actually happening. And FD does not give a fuck. The whole interview, he just... He tried so hard to humanize her, but he seems like a person who actually can't humanize Kidology, which is so strange to me because, again, maybe this is my this was my personal journey with introspection, extrospection. The whole goal of humanizing the world was to humanize humanize myself and vice versa. I don't know why he's so cold to her. I don't know why he feels a need to see her as this J.K. Rowling character. But I get it because Everyone is sort of in that extreme bubble of fearing the thing that isn't them. So the conservatives are super afraid of trans people, even though they they make up so small of the populace and they're just genuinely trying to live their life. But they're so afraid, like the boogeyman. The reason I went after uh, Jordan Peterson was because his paranoia frustrates me, but the progressive paranoia also frustrates me. Now, don't get me wrong. You know how I said earlier, I didn't like how Kidology talked about J.K. Rowling. It's because she's a little too lenient on her. And at the same time, the progressives are too hard on J.K. Rowling. Uh, Gender binary feminists 
second wave feminists traditionally, feminists who believe in the feminine, who believe in the female, and they want to really be there for female people instead of trans people as well. You have to understand, right? There is a really good reason for that. And to humanize them, you must understand their reasoning other than they hate trans people. Because again, just like the religious who say like, ooh, drag queens are all here to like sexualize our children. They're here to like, you know, be perverts around our kids. It's like, okay, we got to talk about how, yes, some drag people, drag people who do drag could, could be sexual deviants. And then we need to talk about how, yes, some feminists who are focused on female centered things could be transphobic. But they also could be just about females, which unless you're in a very specific progressive bubble, I think we all agree that cis and trans are different. And though you can be socialized as a boy, girl, they your whole life and have different experiences with gender and all this stuff, there is a biological component that does exist in the world because we're most likely evolved animals on a planet. And it seems like we have a pretty consistent understanding of that. It just, the nuance disappears the moment you forget the fundamentals. The focus of FD should not be to be so trans-exclusionary, or no, sorry, trans-inclusive, sorry, so trans-inclusive, it should, okay, hold on, FD's whole goal should not just be to be trans-inclusive, but to be compassionate, to suffer with, which means to suffer with, Okay, and he cannot do that with kidology. So it's either his job to be inclusive and compassionate or to be inclusive and self-aware enough to know he cannot be compassionate to all people, which is something I've very strongly been promoting lately as a thought process. I do not think that just because you're compassionate to some groups, you can be compassionate to all. I do not believe just because you can see some people, you can see all. I do not believe that a human being is so supernatural that they can defy their humanness, no matter how introspective they are, right? So when I talk about the levels and being introspective, I'm talking about admitting what you don't know, not getting to five and then being so arrogant about what you know that now you're better than everyone else. No, the whole point of being introspective is to be humbled. The whole point of being political is to be right enough to get legislation passed or to be convincing enough to get legislation passed or to be corrupt enough to get legislation passed. So which one is FD is the question. You know, what is he? But he, gives, he can't be compassionate to all people if he's speaking the way he's speaking, which is fine because I'm also not compassionate to all people. I can't suffer with all of you. I don't have the ability. I'm pretty empathetic, but I'm not a saint. I'm not God. So I only understand so much, right? So when FD sees kidology, is kidology really your biggest target? Is she your biggest? Is that really what's scary to you? In the same way they made J.K. Rowling out to be this bad guy, I think they'll probably try to make kidology out to be this bad guy, but it won't work. It probably worked with their bubbles, but it won't work outside their bubbles. Kidology is just so non-threatening, but so is J.K. Rowling to me. When I see J.K. Rowling, her power came from the progressives. When I see J.K. Rowling, I just I see her as this woman who I related to so much in my youth, who grew up in a house where she was raised as a boy and it confused her and she had a struggle with her father who she no longer talks to. She was in an abusive marriage and then she became this fucking New York Times bestseller, the first self-published or not self-published, but first published billionaire as an author. She did things that I dreamt about as a child, wanting to be a writer, right? And then she became this no fun, just crabby old lady. I don't love J.K. Rowling as a person. I don't hate her, though. She literally is just like another human on the planet. And we share like we share an ecosystem. But she's not this like boogeyman that the progressives make her out to be until they gave her the power enough to be. And now she is using her power and status to basically protect cis women over trans people. And that didn't come out of nowhere. Y'all threatened her. You made her feel unsafe. And you pushed her into the arms of second wave feminism. The progressives are the reason J.K. Rowling exists. In the same way that everything is here because you, the conservatives made the progressives. Like Republicans are the reason their kids took such a hard fucking left turn into communism and socialism. And they pretend that they're all communists and socialists when all of you are just capitalist scum like the rest of us. But still, I get it. I did that too. My parents... Because they were so, like, um, just 
avoided the LGBT topics. It just pushed me into them more. So again, when we look at the world, I fully believe we are all participants in the way that it ended up. I'm a participant. You're a participant. The reason it's so good is because we're all pretty good. The reason it's so bad is because some of us are pretty bad. The reason it's not perfect is because none of us are perfect. So again, when I look at FD, when I look at kidology, when I look at everybody, I just see them as humans being humans, myself included. And I am shook that these are our thought leaders in the online sphere. Because you're all so obviously afraid. And it's weird to be so confident and so afraid. Much like Jordan Peterson. So confident. So afraid. But then again, I think I am too. So I guess that's maybe the biggest cycle of life is that no matter what, we're all kind of afraid, but so confident about it. Moving forward, I love to talk to FD. If you ever wanted to come on my channel, I don't need to come on his. I make good money without needing to like hop onto his channel. But at the same time, out of respect to content creator to content creator, kind of pussy not to have people on your channel. I get it, but it's still pussy because you're trying to keep information away from your audience so they don't get their feelings hurt. And you all want to be leaders in the world? Doesn't make sense to me, right? You want to be leaders, but you're shielding your audience from information because they can't handle it. Hmm, weird. Now, with that said, that is different than creating a space that is welcoming to people, which I tried to do on my channel by being welcoming to ideas and thoughts and people, but understanding we all come from different backgrounds. If I'm going to have a Muslim on, they might talk shit on pork as I eat bacon. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just we are different. We are not the same. So for FD or the progressives to assume that they're not also going to mess up their children. That's a little narcissistic for me. I'm trying to think of a good example. Like imagine you're a progressive parent and your kid comes to you and says, hey, I'm at uh, I'm on campus, I'm in high school, and there's like a Republican club and a Democrat club. And I want to know which one to join. And imagine that you're a progressive parent and you're like, you better join the Communist Party, bro. Is that any different than growing up Republican when all your parents were like, you're going to join the Republican Party, bro? Your parents almost like pretend to let you choose. Oh, I want you to explore all these different religions and go ask questions, but you better end up the right one. We're all the same. It doesn't matter if we're progressive parents or conservative ones. We want our children to be like us or similar enough to us that it doesn't make us feel bad, like we failed as parents. You think my conservative parents don't think they failed a little bit because I left the Catholic Church? You think your progressive brains aren't going to feel a little disappointed when your kid ends up voting for like a Trump? Or I guess in the future, maybe like a Sneeko? <laughs> oh, God. Parenting is hard. It doesn't matter who you are. Just like in my last video where I questioned why do progressives, or I'm sorry, why do conservatives fear the drag queens or fear the trans, you know, as these horrible people that are going to corrupt their kids and give their kids mental illness, but you don't look at the way that religion has hurt millions of people over the billions of people, right? Over the last 2,000 years. Because it doesn't quite work with the way that you have a relationship with it. Your relationship with it is great. Maybe you love religion. Maybe it's been great. Same with LGBT people. Same with porn. Same with drugs. Not everyone is having a bad experience with those things. Some of us are having great experiences. Some of us have mixed experiences. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're bad. I am looking forward to a time when certain bubbles, because I don't think it'll ever be universal, have figured out that being different is okay and not getting along is fine. But we need to get along just a little bit to make society move forward, which I would argue we're kind of already doing. Because again, I can do this for a living. I can walk out of my front door. I do relatively fine. Most of us leave our houses and come home and watch Netflix just fine. But there are pockets of the bubbles that aren't doing as great and they need help, but they're never going to get the help they need unless we start working together a little bit better. But again, you can do you. You can continue isolating. You can continue diverging. You can continue rejecting other people. But then the cycle is just going to continue. And then I have to be the person who's like, ah, the world's the way it is. And humans are going to human. And what am I supposed to do? Protest? Because again, all those years I spent protesting, people are still divided. So what was the fucking point? And I feel like a lot of us don't know the point. We just want a virtue signal because it feels good. 
So again, if you're a slave to your audience, I'm not so sure I can trust you as a content creator. But I do appreciate your ideas and your thoughts. FD's videos on I might have a drama problem broke bread about left tube and everything, which again, you guys all know I had my Natalie Wynn days, my Lindsay Ellis days, and my and my hanging out with progressive days. And it was all well and good, but those people are not the same people behind closed doors. They are different, just like the conservatives were when I was growing up. A lot of you are different behind the camera. And that's why I don't fuck with anyone anymore. Too many people are playing two different lives. I don't know what FD is doing. I don't know how many versions of him exist in the world. But I do believe that he is trying to be good for his audience. And I think he's trying to do good for the world. I just think he's doing it in a way that only helps a small populace. Um, his audience, not trans people being the small populace, but like the people who watch him. And uh, I wish him the best on that journey. But it's kind of useless when we're talking about the world. But really helpful when you're talking about a bubble, right? So if your solution is for your bubble, you're doing a great job. Okay, I will talk to you guys soon. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your ideas. I want to talk to FD if he ever wants to talk to me. In Kidology, I already adore because she was open to me. She was thoughtful with me and she humanized me. And I really appreciate that in people. Yeah. Go send some love to FD. I'm going to link my favorite video he's ever made, which is on Left Tube, which I thought was really self-aware. I'm going to leave it. He just posted it two weeks ago. Go check it out. Give him a thumbs up. Send some love. Um, my audience is really old and sane. So obviously, I don't have to tell you guys not to go like cause hate in other people's audiences. We're too old for that. But at the same time, if there's any youngins watching, please don't be rude to FD. He seems like a very nice man. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out Was a fool. Dun, da, da, da.